Hi, I'm CJ Altenberg with TransWest Truck Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado. We appreciate you tuning in. So if you're in the market for a show trailer, we've got a brand new 2023 Cimarron Showstar LX. This is a 10 pin sitting behind me. This trailer is available today. It's pretty rare that you're starting to see any of these pin system trailers, especially these goosenecks, actually hitting the lots available. So this one is available today. We do not expect it to last long. So if you're in the market for some type of small animal pin system trailer, don't hesitate and call us. So again, it's a 23 Showstar LX 10 pin. Let's go ahead and take a look at the drawing because I'll show you some specs on this trailer itself. We're talking 26 foot, three inches on the floor, eight foot wide with just standard on your LX models. And this is six four tall, same thing, that is standard. Now in the front tack room, we made it a little bit bigger. So we went ahead and made it a six footer uh, just to give you a little bit more room. We understand everyone's wanting a little bit more tack on these type of trailers. So again, with it being an LX, it's very well equipped as far as the standard options, but we always go in and add things to them. I mean, these, these Cimarron's are like a fingerprint. Every one of them is a little bit unique, a little bit different. We can do different options to all of them. But as far as these LXs, again, extremely well equipped. Underneath the gooseneck, the very first thing you'll notice is that standard is that electric over hydraulic jack. That is standard on these LXs. And these are absolutely fantastic to be able to push a button up and down. We understand, uh, you know, I mean, these little, little bit bigger trailers, and especially if you're showing off of these trailers quite a bit, you end up leaving a lot of stuff in the front tack rooms, which makes them a little bit heavier. Uh, when you're unhooking hooking and unhooking. Um, but then also, look, a lot of these customers are gonna have small kids as well. So sometimes it's pretty easy to be backing up with maybe a, a junior kind of guiding you back. And then as you get there, all they have to do is reach up and touch the button and down it comes. So it's not having a hand crank. It's real easy to just set it on there. The nice thing about this system too is it does have a manual override. So if you need to jack this on or off, it's almost like a bottle jack type setup where you can just pump it up and then release it and pump it down. So in emergency situations, you can use that. So with that, you're gonna get your battery box that is included with the jack itself. And then also you're gonna have a battery disconnect on there. That is now standard. That actually start, started on the 22 models. So when we go to park this trailer, we can reach up and turn that switch off and kill all power to this trailer. So if we accidentally left the light on, you know, we're not draining the battery. So again, getting in those situations where you go to uh, hook it up and you've got a dead battery. So that is standard. One thing that we added underneath here, you'll notice these two feet that come off of here. That is a generator bracket right there. So we can actually set a portable generator on this. So we get to the tack room and get to the stall area, we'll explain to you what we did as far as a power system you can set that generator mount it there and the actual outlet for the power is up underneath the the gooseneck deck behind this battery box it's kind of tucked back up in there it's a little bit hard to see but that is where you're actually going to plug your cord into and get your power now on these trailers these newer trailers today especially when you're pulling with newer pickups, newer Fords, newer Dodges, and even the new GM body styles. Everything has gone up in bed height. So one thing that we really are cautious about is we want these trailers running level. You have two axles. We want equal weight distribution, but also we want bed clearance. So over the years, the industry standard has been a 50 inch gooseneck drop. Well, again, Dodge and Fords have gotten taller. And then with the new GM body styles, they've gone up about two, two and a half inches. So that's made a little bit of a challenge to get these trailers running level and have bed clearance. You get one or the other. So we've gone in and changed this to a 53 inch gooseneck drop wall. It does eat, eat three inches up in your gooseneck, but making the trailer run level, plenty of bed clearance. We don't want to tear up a bed on a real expensive truck and do damage to a real expensive trailer. So we've taken those steps and done that for you. You can kind of see this one's the white sheeted trailer. That is standard. It doesn't matter what model it is. White is standard. And then from there, you can go with a silver metallic, champagne, 
Uh, there's a charcoal metallic, black, you can do the full stainless if you want. Those are up charges when you go from there. But this white is just a real slick, clean color. And then we top it off with the polished extrusion. You can kind of see that on the bottom rail, top rail. And as we get to the back of the trailer, you'll start to notice that real polished, shiny look to the extrusion. Now, when we're going to clean this trailer with polish, you never want to acid wash them because it'll burn it. It'll give it kind of a real hazy or smoky look to it where the trailer's gonna have to be repolished. What you wanna do with these trailers is use citrus wash. That is what you wanna use to clean these trailers. Never use any type of dish soap either. That'll do damage and again, you'll have to repolish these trailers when you're using those type of items. Now, over the years, this was a four foot standard front tack room and then it grew to five and then it, we grew to six. We just continually put more and more tack on these trailers. Uh, we've had customers go in and do eight foot, some with mid tacks. I mean, you can do a lot of different configurations, a lot of different options with these tack rooms. But a lot of people want that extra space because they're showing off of it. Again, it's nice to be able to leave equipment and those type of items in this trailer when you are showing, especially in the, when you're right in the thick of jackpot season, you're out on the road every week and going to shows. We don't have to unload at the barn, reload. You can just kind of leave those items on there. So again, as you're showing off of these, having a lot more room, a lot more amenities has become really, really popular as far as how we're building these trailers. So when we get into this tack room, we'll start up at the neck, real basic. You have a lot of storage space. So this trailer being eight foot wide, and then on the Cimarron, they're an eight two long nose compared to a lot of competitors are seven six, seven eight. So we have a lot more depth. We have the extra width. You've got this bar, this removes, but this kind of holds those smaller miscellaneous items from sliding off. Over to the left here, you'll notice a breaker box. And this breaker box, again, I showed you where that plug is for that 30 amp cord underneath for either a generator or another power source. But this is your actual breaker box right here. And then you've got an outlet right in here as well. You can charge up a phone if you want, uh, you know, do some little things like that as you're showing in these trailers. On the gooseneck deck wall here, so on this drop wall here, you'll see a 12 inch boot box that goes all the way across. This is another really good place for smaller items making sure they're not sliding around. You can see we've got the cord actually sitting in here for that 30 amp, but also this, this works as a, a bench. You can sit here, you know, if you're showing off of this trailer in between, you know, classes, anything like that. And then if you have to jump up into the nose, you've got a nice little bench there to hop up that way. Now, over here on this partition wall, you'll notice these are big hooks. In the past, they've always used bridle hooks that you see on horse trailers. Well, that was always a little bit of a challenge because these hooks were always really close together. They weren't very deep off the wall and they weren't very tall. So for in the show livestock world, big hoses, big cords, those type of items, you'd end up having to use about half the bridle hooks to actually hang a hose or a cord. And a lot of times they're trying to fall off. So. They've spaced these out. These are actually a, a group of four utility hooks on this one here. These are aluminum powder coated, so they're really strong and durable, but you'll notice how wide they've given you for space. They've made them deeper off the wall and taller. So hanging, again, hoses, cords, a lot more flexibility there from that standpoint. Below those are two rows of this airliner track that has become really popular. You can order a lot of different hooks that just adjust and move around off of Amazon. You can usually buy them in packs of 10, 20, something like that. They're really handy to have because if you bring items in here, you can actually put them against the wall, strap them down if you want. Uh, there's different hooks. You can hang feeders. Uh, Cimarron actually builds a piece that actually attaches to it. So you can actually place buckets in there for your additives or anything like that. So that also folds down. So there's a lot of things we can do after the fact, but the big thing is, is actually having the railing there so then you can do what you want after it. And then we carpeted it behind it as well. So we don't have any items really sliding against, you know, moving back and forth in transit uh, against that wall, against that aluminum. Now we're, we're protecting the wall itself and then any of that equipment that you have is 
in there. We understand again, you might be taking some clothes, showing off this trailer, you need somewhere to hang items. There's a clothes bar here and then the shelf up, up, up top. It actually has a lip so it holds items in, but if the kids need to hop in here, change clothes, you know, go from what they, what they wore to head to the show to actual show clothes, you can hang those items right here. And then you have a pass-through door that goes into the stall area. So again, as you're prepping feed, getting ready for a show, anything like that, you can actually work between the stall area and this front tack room by going right through this pass-through door rather than having to go out of the tack room, maybe on the side ramp and then back into the trailer there. Now, the last thing is you come out, you will notice that there is a step there, that fold up step we, as far as our inventory, I mean, on this type of a setup here, it's gonna be standard because of the eight foot wide, but we are big fans of these steps. Doesn't matter what width of a trailer, whether it's the standard 610, seven and a half wide, eight foot, even eight four, if you wanna go even wider, these steps make a world of difference. Again, we're always hauling items in and out of these trailers. So, as you can see where I'm standing compared to the bottom of this door frame, that's a pretty big step. So by having that, it makes transitions really easy going in and out. Again, same thing with, you know, maybe you got some younger juniors that are just starting out, you know, let's help them get in and out of this trailer as easy as possible. So those steps are very handy from that standpoint. Up top, you also have some light coverage. Here's a 16 inch awning light up there. It shoots down and out. We put one on each side of this trailer, we put some on the back. So you have a lot of light coverage on the outside of this trailer as well if you're working off of it. And then you have this side ramp. So again, depending on where you're showing, different types of setup, you can work off of multiple ways on this trailer. Obviously the back that we'll show you, but then you can work off this side ramp. The other thing that's really handy is to have this gate over this opening. There's another one on the other side of this trailer, but now if we're showing off of it, we need to get some air in here. And it's really easy to drop things down, whether it's the side ramp, the side door, get that air movement in there, keeping animals nice and cool. Uh, but that is really handy to just be able to work off of this trailer in multiple directions. Now, going back to the LX standard options, drop windows. So these drops are standard. You have the jail bars. Again, it creates a lot more airflow in here. You know, main, the main thing is keeping that stall area nice and cool and comfortable for our animals. So you have the drops. Then, besides that, you've got this lower air gap with these aluminum fold down slats. These are on a gas shock, so they're really easy to open and close. You get this bigger opening. Cimarron does a, a aluminum bar that goes across there. So again, we don't have our smaller animals trying to get a head out, anything like that. Uh, but it's really handy from the standpoint, if you leave in the morning, really cool. I mean, we were already low 50s here in Colorado and you know, we'll get to about 90 today, maybe even low 90s. So when you leave in the morning, it's cooler. You know, you can have this shut up a little bit, maybe not as much airflow and that cold air blowing on them. But as the day heats up, it's real easy to stop and literally run around this trailer and open this up. We're not having to worry about pulling plexiglass, pulling those items out, storing them. Uh, this is real easy to just open and close as you work around this trailer, you know, hopping in and out and, and get more air movement to those, those animals. We have two 7,000 pound Dexter rubber torsion axles, 16 inch wheels, Goodyear tires, these are nitrogen filled, they're balanced. Nitrogen will make it to where we don't have those PSI levels fluctuating drastically. Again, think about that heat difference I was talking to you about just a minute ago. Really cool to really hot, that makes PSI levels change drastically. Uh, last thing we want is something happening. It, it really maintains that PSI level to where again, we're not having as frequent or as often a blowouts, those type of scenarios with underinflated or overinflated tires. There is some misconceptions. You can put air to these. That is not a problem. Uh, if you have a slow leak, something along those lines, we do recommend you go back and put nitrogen in them when you get them fixed, because again, just the benefits of that. Now you do get a one year, no questions asked warranty on these tires. 
That is through Lion's Head, the vendor that Cimarron uses, not actually through Cimarron. You'd actually contact Lion's Head. Uh, but on these here, if you have a blowout, catch a nail, catch road debris, doesn't matter. The first year, they're gonna cover those tires for you. You also get two years of roadside assistance. So they really stand behind that aspect of, of the trailer and those wheels and tires as far as that's concerned. Again, you can kind of see that uh, polished extrusion as we walk by. It really dresses these trailers up. These are really nice trailers. Uh, again, a little bit more work to maintain that. Uh, I'll be honest with you, the easiest thing to do is when you do wash these, you either take some towels, soft towels, and literally hand dry it so we don't get those water spots. Or <laughs> you get in and you hit the interstate and you do about 80 for a little while, let that air kind of you know really dry it off itself. Now you might have to spot dry it a little bit here and there, but that's the easiest thing to do. I mean, it, it, it does take a little bit more work when you are dealing with these polished trailers compared to mill finish, but boy, they do look sharp if you keep them, keep them nice and clean like this. Now I want you to notice we have dual 50-50 rear doors, but as you can see, these doors wrap around the side of the trailer. We have really been doing this and really put a lot of emphasis on these type of trailers for a while. Uh, and that's based on, you know, that so many people are showing off these trailers, you know, we, you cram them in in tight places, arenas, parking lots, and you're really close side by side. You know, if this thing's winged out at a 90 degree, it's hard to get, whether it's hogs, lambs, goats, I mean, even steers, some people actually, you know, pull a set of pins out and haul some heifers or steers in these, but boy, it's easier to work around the trailer by having these wraparound hinges. So that's something that we go ahead and option onto these show stars. The standard is those 90 degrees, but again, there's definitely a lot of benefits to those wraparounds. Again, get them out of the way and secure them back. So you have those two 16 inch awning lights here at the back. Majority of the time, you're probably gonna have to work off the back of this trailer. So having a little bit more light coverage back here is, is definitely nice to have. And then we have dual 50-50 ramps over these 50-50 doors. They're independent doors, same with the ramps. They're really easy to, to lift up and down with the springs that Cimarron uses. The other thing is it's half the ramp as far as the width of this trailer. So really easy for, again, juniors to be able to use these, uh, you know, utilize and use this trailer itself. Now, again, a 10 pin setup. These are adjustable, so we can go 50-50, 60-40 type scenarios. Again, we can pull sections off of this if we'd like. You can pin gates back. There's a lot of just versatility to these trailers. Again, we've got quite a few people that'll maybe haul a steer or a heifer now and then to a show, so it's really easy to pull a set out and then put them in one area and still be able to haul your small animals. We do some combo trailers where you have pins and then also a traveling gate. So you've got some of those as well. But these gates swing multiple directions for you. So again, it's easy to work off of. We like pinning these uh, rear gates off the sides. And then on the right hand side, those gates actually hinge off the right hand side of the trailer. So over there on passenger side. And it, they just seem to work and flow a lot better when we are utilizing especially this alleyway when we're at a 60-40 setup. Uh, everything just again, just flows much better off of these trailers. But the old systems, when you had to go to a 60-40 to a 50-50, I mean, you were having to pull pins, literally picking the gates up, moving them to the next post, setting them in there, repinning them. It was a little bit of a process. I'm not gonna say it was rocket science by any means and took 10 minutes to move a gate. That wasn't the case, but these are the functionality and the design that Cimarron's done to these now is unbelievable. So here we are in this first section, or I guess the sex, second section off the back of the trailer. We're at a 60-40 setup. All I have to do is release the center gate, pull towards myself, pop it into that rubber socket, and lock it into place. And now we're at a 50-50 in this section. So you can manipulate these stall sizes all you want with different setups. Again, you can completely remove these if you like and have one big area. You can pin some back. Again, just a lot of flexibility as far as that's concerned. If you are gonna pull these posts out, these sections, uh, I do recommend before you do that, just take a marker, start at the front, 
label one, two, three, four, five, as you work back, because then when you go to put these back, you know exactly what order they go in. It's really simple. I can remove all these pins by myself in about, you know, five minutes or so, maybe a little bit more, and then putting them back in about another five to 10 minutes. I mean, it's really not that difficult to move them in and out. Now you will notice that we don't have any rubber mats, any flooring on this trailer. And the reason why is because of this setup and because of each of these posts that we're dealing with in the floor, you know, it just almost makes it a puzzle if you pull them out. And if you got hogs, they're gonna wanna get underneath those possibly and they're gonna be pulling them up and it's just gonna be a little bit of a hassle. So we recommend to customers, stick with the aluminum floor and just bed good and deep or go with worm flooring, something along those lines where it's a permanent, unpenetrable rubber mat. You know, they'll be able to actually trowel around these uh, plastic pieces in the floor where the posts go into. They'll make them almost flush with that. So again, then we're never having to worry about really pulling those out, cleaning this floor. You can literally just power wash it out. If you are gonna do that, I would recommend just do it at the beginning. It's cheaper for us to do it on a brand new trailer than it is down the road when it's used trailer. And that just might have to do with just the actual cleanup and preparation of the floor. So we kind of leave this as you make the call. We've got someone, you know, within a half hour of us that does install that floor so we can do that option for you. Black is standard. They can do different colors. There might be a little bit more lead time and it is a little bit more price per square foot if you want to do colors, but that's an option for you as well. So let's talk, we talked about a lot of air movement, drop windows, drop downs low. We have 10 roof vents, two way roof vents on this because it is a 10 pin, you're gonna get a section of two above each area. So we can manipulate airflow throughout this trailer. <clears throat> but then what's really important is this roof that is standard on every single Cimarron. That is their insulated roof. It is a half inch thick, reinforced honeycomb design r3 thermal value that means it will keep this stall area cooler than aluminum sheeted roof typically about 20 percent and it does make a difference on these trailers believe me you get in here this isn't as tall of a trailer with it being a low profile heat rises you can use these roof vents to get that heat away but you can literally walk up in here on a hot day and put your hand to it and it will not feel hot at all Aluminum roofs sometimes and they have real extreme hot days. You won't even be able to put your hand on it. I mean, it gets that hot. So think about the stall area and again, keeping these animals nice and cool. One thing that we did do if down the road, if you ever wanted to, is we did frame for an AC unit in this. So we have our 30 amp breaker package, but then we have this framework. This will save a lot of headache, a lot of hassle down the road if you wanted to put an air conditioner. All they have to do is cut this out run the wire, install it, and you're good to go. So that's a very small step that we do just based on kind of what you, if it, again, up here in these, you know, cooler states like up here in Colorado, I mean, we'll cool off at night, you know, have those cool mornings, have those cool evenings. We'll have a section of the day where it'll be hot, but not like some of those Southern states are real hot humidity uh, to where, you know, again, it's just really not gonna cool off as much, but we wanna give you the flexibility to to add that type of a scenario if you want down the road. Now, one other thing that we did to kind of combat a lot of that as well, as you'll notice up here, is this rail. This is the rail that they use on traveling gates for their cattle trailers. You'll see them on their Steerwalt models or Lone Star models, but on our show trailers, we use this, and that actually, they'll have two of them, one on each side to run the gates down. But what they've done is they've made this track and then we've got some brackets that we can actually hand some fang, uh, hang some fans on. So if we wanted a little bit more air movement in this trailer, I can actually attach a fan to this and then we can manipulate airflow. There's two of them. I can adjust them anywhere on this rail. It literally runs almost the full length. It's about a foot off the back of this trailer. But now we can, again, about a 12 inch barn fan kind of works best. You know, when you get 24 inch fans, they just hang down too low. Those 12 inches will stay above your gates and then again, keeping them up out of the way. Um, but then with that 30 amp breaker, we put some outlets in this top rail. So we put one up at the front, one in the middle, one at the back. So again, you can move those fans where you want, tighten these brackets up so they're secure against there. 
and then you can put your fans on and let that run. Again, a little bit more airflow for our animals. You know, dead air, hot days, you feel miserable, a little breeze kicks up, and you feel a little bit better about life just because of that air movement. So same thing in here. So that's a nice little feature. Again, we can do an air conditioner. You have that insulated roof. There's a lot of steps that have been done to these trailers uh, that are gonna keep your animals nice, cool, and comfortable as far as that's concerned. A lot of these gates can just be operated with one hand. So if you're carrying items, you know, it's really easy to open and close these pins. You've got some slam latches as you work forward into the trailer. As you work backwards with these gates, you might have to pull the pin back. But in these type of scenarios, you can literally just slam it shut. But again, having that eight foot wide makes a big difference in that stall area as far as the actual size of those pins. Obviously with it being eight foot wide, you know, you're gonna have wheel well in there, seven and a half foot, you're gonna have a little bit, six, 10, you won't have any. So again, here's a good look at driver's side. Again, drop windows, fold down air slats. You also get the button lights. Those are standard now. We like to go in and add maybe a few more to these trailers. Uh, seven standard on this one here, but they really do dress the trailer up. They do put out a lot of light, so they look really good at nighttime, especially running down the road. We've had some customers build them where we've had lights every foot. We've done them on the bottom rail. We can do a lot of different things to these trailers. You can completely customize them. Then at your escape door, same thing. We've got a gate over that opening. And then again, a fold up step. So if you are working in and out of the trailer, you don't have to make that big step up into it. So again, this is a Cimarron Showstar LX 10 pin. It's a 23 model. Again, I kind of walked you through some of those upgrades that we did to this. We can add a lot of stuff on after the fact still to this trailer. It is available today. We do take trade-ins. We offer financing, shipping, so we can deliver this to your door even. So I'm gonna give you the stock number on this trailer in case you are interested. That is 5N. 211004. Again, it's a 2023 Cimarron Showstar LX 10 pin setup. Give us a call. Anybody on our sales team can help you out. That number is 303 684 3400. Thanks for tuning in.